In today's video, we'll learn how to use the drill press. The drill press is a machine that's used for making holes in a variety of materials. It's a useful tool because it drills straighter than a hand drill and can drill holes with more precision. Let's review the lesson objectives. By the end of this video, students will be able to identify various types of drill bits and select the appropriate bit for the application, identify major parts of the drill press, install and remove drill bits and set the table height position, select and change belt speeds, understand work holding techniques for the drill press, and finally, safely operate the drill press. Let's label a few major parts of the machine. The belt cover on top, the electric motor in the rear, the chuck key mounted to the side of the machine, the power switch, the spindle, which is driven through a series of belts by the electric motor, the chuck, which holds the drill bit, the table upon which the workpiece rests, the column clamp, which needs to be loosened before adjusting the table height, the table height adjustment crank. On the side of the machine is the downward feed lever. Let's talk about a few safety precautions when working with the drill press. First, make sure that the work area is free and clear of any extraneous work pieces or debris. The drill press table is not a workbench. Rags especially pose a hazard because they can become tangled in the drill bit. When you position your workpiece, make sure your hands are located safely away from the bit to avoid injuries. Do not ever grab a hold of the rotating chuck or the rotating bit while they're in motion. Remove all jewelry and make sure not to wear any gloves while operating the drill press as they too can pose an entanglement hazard for your hands. Before installing the drill bit, we need to set our proper belt speeds. To select the proper speed for the bit to rotate, we must reference the table on the inside of the belt drive cover. Notice the six speed ranges down the left side of the table. Also notice the variety of materials as columns across the top of the table. Units are listed for diameters of drill bit in both inches and millimeters. Generally speaking, smaller drill bits operate at a faster speed than larger drill bits. Harder materials such as steel require a slower speed, where softer materials such as wood or plastics require a higher speed. This drill press features a variable speed drive ranging from approximately 500 RPM to 2500 RPM. It's important to adjust the lever only while the machine is powered on, otherwise damage may occur. Today, we'll be drilling aluminum with a bit that is 13 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. The size of the drill bit sits between these two categories, 11 30 seconds and 15 30 seconds. So we'll choose a speed that's in the middle of these two ranges. We'll set our drill press to 1,620 rotations per minute. To achieve the speed of 1,620 RPM, as determined from the table, we need to adjust the belt positions to match the diagram. Currently, the belt positions are set for 510 revolutions per minute, which is too slow for the type of bit and material we are drilling. First, loosen the thumb screw on the side of the machine. There's another thumb screw on the opposite side of the machine, which also needs to be loosened. Pull the tension adjustment lever forward, relieving tension from the belts. In this instance, the belts must be completely removed to adjust their positions. The rearward belt gets installed on the lowest pulley position, while the front belt gets installed one position higher. Ensure that the belts are level on the same steps of the pulleys and reapply belt tension with the lever. While holding tension on the lever, tighten the thumb screw. Now that the belts are properly in position, tighten the thumb screw on the opposite side of the machine. Close the belt cover and we're ready to install the drill bit. To install a drill bit in the machine, it's important to clamp only on the straight part of the drill, called the shank, and not to clamp on the sharp parts, called the flutes. Turn the sleeve of the drill chuck to loosen it, insert the bit up inside, and turn the sleeve the opposite direction to tighten it. Then use the chuck key to apply the final tightening to the drill chuck, ensuring that it's very tight so it won't slip. 
To remove the drill bit is simply the reverse of the process, using the chuck key to apply pressure in the counterclockwise direction while holding the drill bit, ensuring it won't fall. It's important to always return the chuck key to the side of the machine and the drill bit to the location where you got it from. Which material would be drilled on the slowest speed? A. Wood B. Plastic C. Aluminum D. Steel The correct answer is D. Steel. It's a harder material which needs to be drilled at a slower speed. Drill bits are stored in a set of three drill dispensers featuring numbered sizes, lettered sizes, and fractional sizes. The numbered and lettered sizes equate to decimal numbers less than a half inch. There's 115 sizes in total. A digital caliper is kept near the drill dispenser as a second method of verifying the size of drill bits. This bit measures up to size. It's important to return bits to the proper location in the drawers so they're ready for the next operator to use. A step drill, also called a unibit, drills a variety of hole sizes ranging from small to large in increments of 1 16th of an inch. The countersink, while similar in appearance to the step drill, serves a very different purpose. Its purpose is to provide a tapered angled hole into which a flathead countersunk screw will be installed. A round hole must exist before the countersink is used. A twist drill is used in a variety of materials, including aluminum, steel, brass, and plastic. However, it is not suitable for use in wood. In wood materials, we have three types of drill bits. The brad point drill, the Forstner bit, and the spade bit. Brad point drills are typically offered in smaller sizes than spade drills. Notice all three types of wood drilling bits include a sharp point to keep the bit centered as it travels through the wood. Each are similar in function, serving slightly different purposes. For instance, the Forstner bit can provide a flat-bottomed counterbore, whereas the brad point drill and spade drill are typically more for drilling through the material. A decimal equivalent drill chart is commonly found hanging on the wall near the drill press in any machine shop. It shows the variety of sizes available in both fractions and letters, as well as numbers and metric sizes. The chart also features tap drill sizes, which we'll review in a later video. Another tool that may be used in the drill press is a hole saw. This set features sizes ranging from 9 16 of an inch in diameter up to 4 and 3 quarter inches in diameter. The set also features a variety of arbors for quick installation. The set also includes a chart indicating the speed to run each size of hole saw. After installing the drill bit, the next step is to set the table height. First, release the column clamp, and then crank the table to a higher position. Make sure that the workpiece sits just below the tip of the drill bit. Next, ensure that the table hole sits directly below the drill bit so it plunges through without drilling into the table. Go ahead and tighten the column clamp. To prevent the workpiece from spinning, it needs to be clamped or held. This workpiece is large enough to hold by hand, keeping the fingers clear enough away from the drill bit. Often, machinists will use Dicom blue layout marking fluid to precisely identify hole locations. The fluid provides a high contrast marking on aluminum. Brush on a thin layer and wait a few minutes for it to dry before scribing the hole locations. It's important to not spill the Dicom marking fluid as it will stain the workbench as well as your clothing. An inexpensive caliper can be used to scribe a line from each edge of the workpiece to indicate where the hole should be drilled. This procedure is not recommended for expensive calipers as the jaws may become damaged through extensive scribing. After the marks have been scribed, use an automatic center punch to mark the hole location. 
Pushing downward firmly creates a dimple in which the drill bit can start. Today we're enlarging the size of existing holes in this workpiece. Let's begin drilling. Apply a firm downward pressure to ensure chip formation. We've broken through the top wall of the box tubing. Proceed down to the lower wall of the box tubing with a firm, steady, consistent pressure on the feed handle. Now that the drill bit is through the workpiece, slowly retract it back out while maintaining clamping pressure with your left hand. Use a chip brush to remove the aluminum shavings from the workpiece and the drill press table. Don't brush these with your hand as they can become lodged in your skin. When working with pieces that are difficult or unsafe to hold by hand, consider using clamps to attach the workpiece to the drill press table. Adjust the position of the workpiece as needed by loosening the clamps slightly or adjusting the table slightly before locking the table clamp. For holding smaller materials or harder materials, use a vise as these parts are dangerous to hold by hand. Position the vise underneath the drill bit to ensure the location is on your indicated mark. For added security, the vise can be bolted to the drill press's table. Let's begin the drilling process. Notice the formation of spiral shaped chips clung to the bit after drilling. This is an indicator that our speed and downward feed pressure were correct in the drilling process. Be careful handling these chips as they are very sharp on the edges. Peck drilling with a consistent downward pressure and frequent breaks to clear the chips is important to allow the aluminum chips to evacuate out of the hole being drilled. When the drill bit reaches the end of the hole, it'll produce a slightly different sound. Be careful removing the workpiece as it may be warm after drilling. To drill holes to a repeatable depth, this drill press features an adjustable zero stop. To set the zero stop, loosen the thumb screw and move the drill bit to the desired depth. Rotate the stop to the zero position until it lines up with the indicator. Tighten the thumb screw. Verify that the drill press will not exceed that range of travel. The depth is now set. When using shorter bits and taller pieces, the drill press handle will sometimes interfere. For that reason, these can be removed. and the operator can use the other handles. In this video, we reviewed many aspects of operating the drill press, including selection of bits, changing belt speeds, work holding, and safe operation techniques. With practice, you can become proficient at operating this versatile hole making tool. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.